In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. Brethren, let us acknowledge our sins, and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. I confess to Almighty God, and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have very sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most serious fault. Therefore, I ask the Blessed Mary, ever virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Amen. Jesus Christ, your Son, 
who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Peter proceeded to speak and said, You know what has happened all over Judea, beginning in Galilee after the baptism that John preached, how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit and power. He went about doing good and healing all those oppressed by the devil, for God was with him. We are, we are witnesses of all that he did, both in the country of the Jews and in Jerusalem. They put him to death by hanging him on a tree. This man God raised on the third day and granted that he be visible, not to all the people, but to us, the witnesses chosen by God in advance, who ate and drank with him after he rose from the dead. He commissioned us to preach to the people and testify that he is the one appointed by God as judge of the living and the dead. To him all the prophets bear witness that everyone who believes in him will receive forgiveness of sins through his name. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God.
Holy Gospel according to St. John. On the first day of the week, Mary of Magdala came to the tomb early in the morning, while it was still dark, and saw the stone removed from the tomb. So she ran and went to Simon Peter, and to the other disciple whom Jesus loved, and told them, They have taken the Lord from the tomb, and we don't know where they put him. So Peter and the other disciple went out and came to the tomb. They both ran, but the other disciple ran faster than Peter and arrived at the tomb first. He bent down and saw the burial cloths there, but did not go in. When Simon Peter arrived after him, he went into the tomb and saw the burial cloths there, and the cloth that had covered his head, not with the burial cloths, but rolled up in a separate place. Then the other disciple also went in, the one who had arrived at the tomb first. And he saw and believed, for they did not yet understand the scripture that Jesus had to rise from the dead. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. those words with such joy in our hearts. But imagine being at that first Easter. In our gospel, we hear of how Mary Magdalene, before dawn, went to the tomb. The darkness that surrounded her, the physical darkness, was nothing compared to the darkness in her heart. After all, on Good Friday, she had seen our Lord suffer so brutally, so cruelly, she had seen such injustice, and then she saw him buried. And so, Mary Magdalene went to that tomb, thinking that she was somehow going to be able to anoint the body of Jesus. Somehow that she was going to do this nice act of charity. But how? When they buried Jesus in this tomb, this new tomb, they rolled a rock over the entrance, a rock that was two to three tons. Then the Jewish authorities asked the Roman authorities to seal that tomb. So they drove spikes all along the perimeter of that tomb, tied ropes that intersected, and then put a large wax seal in the center with the imperial signet. And with that, they made sure that if anyone ever broke that seal without authorization, that person would be crucified. The soldiers were placed there, and they too knew as Roman soldiers, if they fell asleep or abandoned their post, they would be scourged to death. No one was getting into that tomb. Jesus was dead, and they wanted him to stay dead. But when Mary came to the tomb, the rock miraculously had been rolled away. The tomb was empty. She thinks somebody stole the body. She goes to run and tell the apostles. We hear of how Peter and John go there. They look in and they believed. How beautiful that is. They knew that Jesus had said three times in the public ministry that he would suffer death. He would die. But on the third day, he would rise again. They don't quite understand exactly what's happened. But they believed. That night, though, and if we just go a few more verses, we hear of how the risen Lord does appear to Mary Magdalene. He appears to the apostles. He appears to the two disciples on the way to Emmaus. He appears to 500 that very day. They knew Jesus had risen. Now, I would have to think he also appeared to our Blessed Mother. Pope St. John Paul II agrees with me that after all, <laughs> if the Lord's not in the gospel, Jesus would have appeared to his blessed mother to show that he is risen. He's not a resuscitated corpse, though. That's important. 
It's not as though this is like night of the living dead or something. Jesus has become glorified. He's been totally transfigured. He's conquered not only the sin, the suffering, but death itself, the effects of death. The gospel tells us that his face was radiant like white, like, like lightning. His clothes were dazzling like the sun. He could appear. He could disappear. He could eat a meal. He could be touched. But something was different. He did have his wound marks. When we think about it, why those? He had his wound marks to always remind us how much he loves each one of us. Jesus was truly risen from the dead. The tomb was empty. So what? What difference does it make? This is a question that a teenager at Bishop Ireton actually asked my priest friend who teaches there. So, so what? What difference does it make to them? It makes all the difference in the world. To believe is to fall in love. The old English root of the word believe is to love. And when we recognize how much God loves us, shown through our Savior, we can only respond in love to know real love. This is why our Lord came into this world. We remember God so loved the world that he gave his only son, not to condemn, but to give everlasting life to those who believe. Jesus perfectly revealed God's truth and love to us by his words, by his deeds. He went to the cross to offer the sacrifice for sin that transcends time. When we say Jesus died for my sins, we can only say that because he's true God who became true man, and that sacrifice is ever living. Jesus rose from the dead to give us the hope of everlasting life. The gates of heaven are open. So as St. Paul says, if we die with Christ, we shall live with Christ. If we persevere with Christ, we shall reign with Christ. It makes all the difference in the world. Now ask yourself, do you know of any other leader that has died for everyone else? I don't. Do you know of any other leader in history who rose from the dead? I don't. There's only one tomb that's empty, the tomb of Jesus Christ. Jesus makes all the difference in the world. Because of the resurrection, then, we take his words as truth. In the gospel, our Lord says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. Jesus said, I am the good shepherd. He said, I am the resurrection and the life. He who believes in me, though he should die, will have everlasting life. And we could go on. But his words are truth. And his words give us everlasting life. What other words would you believe in? Ask yourself that. During the course of centuries, there have been many philosophical treatises, many kinds of party platforms, all kinds of things. But there's only one book that still stands for 2,000 years now, the Word of God, the Bible. That's the book that has the words of eternal life. Jesus, the risen Lord, makes all the difference in the world. Because of the resurrection, what we do right now, and when we think of all the Easter sacraments that we celebrated, we don't look upon them as rituals, these nice pious traditions. They are living sacraments. They convey God's grace, his life and love to each one of us. Yes, Christ instituted these sacraments. So last night, we had 15 new people come into our church. Some were baptized. By baptism, they're free from original sin and recreated as a child of God. They were infused with sanctifying grace. A sacred seal 
was put onto their soul. A sacred seal that identifies them as a child of God and also a Christian. They were confirmed, empowered with the gifts of the Holy Spirit. They received Holy Communion, the body, blood, soul, and divinity of Jesus Christ. And many people had gone to confession this time. Some had been away for many years. How beautiful it was, though, to see that they knew they had been forgiven. Some had tears. So sacraments that are living signs that convey God's grace, they make all the difference in the world. Can you name another ritual that does that? Can you name another ritual that changes a person so much that he's willing to lay down his life for others, like the martyrs did, like our St. Agnes did? Do you know any other ritual, any other constitution, any other political agenda that would do that? I don't. But these did. These martyrs did because they knew Christ was with them through these powerful sacraments. The risen Jesus makes all the difference in the world. And we're here too. I mean, think about it. We're here. Not because this is some little social club. We aren't here because this is some nice tradition once a year. We're here because we're part of a church, a church that Christ founded. He told the apostles, I will be with you always until the end of the time. Even though we know in history there have been different scandals, persecutions, schisms, heresies, and so on, we know individually we fail, but the church continues the mission on. Do you know of any other organization, any other institution that has survived 2,000 years? I don't. Think of St. Peter. So St. Peter, the first pope, was martyred right at St. Peter's Square. There's an obelisk there. I'm sure you've seen pictures of it. He would have known that because that obelisk there was in the middle of the Circus Caligula. So St. Peter, when he was crucified, saw that. Ask yourself, though, where's the Roman Empire today? Where is the Jewish temple, the Jewish leadership? Where is the emperor of Rome today? They aren't there, but the church is. Yes, when they put Jesus in the tomb, they thought, he's dead, we're going to keep him dead. Can't be done. The church continues on. And lastly, the risen Lord gives us Christ. He truly gives us himself, and that gives us hope. So think, who gives us really hope in this world? Hope beyond a grave. Hope beyond all the promises we have in this world to talk about happiness will come with material things, happiness will come with power, and so on. It's all left at the grave. But Christ gives us hope now and beyond. I think of one of our parishioners who died this past February, kind lady, and she said to me, about two weeks before she died, she said, Jesus has always been so good to me. I always know that I can rely on him, even in the toughest times. I know that I'm now preparing for death, but I don't fear because I know Jesus is with me and he'll take me home. How beautiful. That's real hope. Can you think of anything else, anyone else, that gives us hope? Jesus makes all the difference in the world. So my brothers and sisters, we're here to celebrate the beauty of Easter, this wonderful gift. We're called to believe, to fall in love, but not fall in love with an idea, not fall in love with a ritual, not fall in love with a tradition. We're here to fall in love with a risen Lord who makes all the difference in the world. May God bless you. Amen. Amen.
please stand. On this Easter Sunday, we renew our baptismal promises. For each question, a profound I do. So, dear brethren, through the Paschal Mystery, we have been buried with Christ in baptism, so that we may walk with him in newness of life. So that now that our Lenten observance is concluded, let us renew the promises of holy baptism, by which we once renounce Satan and his works, and promise to serve God in the Holy Catholic Church. So I ask you, do you renounce sin so as to live in the freedom of the children of God? I do. Do you renounce the war of evil so that sin may have no mastery over you? I do. Do you renounce Satan, the author and prince of sin? I do. Do you believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth? I do. Do you believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was born of the Virgin Mary, suffered death and was buried, rose again from the dead, and is seated at the right hand of the Father? I do. Do you believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting? I do. And may Almighty God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has given us new birth by water and the Holy Spirit, and bestowed on us forgiveness of our sins, keep us by his grace in Christ Jesus our Lord, for eternal life. Amen. Amen. Enforcement, 
military, intelligence, and diplomatic services to make peace. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the end of war in Ukraine, with withdrawal of Russia, and the restoration of justice and peace, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For Christians who face persecution and genocide, especially in communist and Islamic countries, that the Holy Spirit will keep them strong in the faith, and for all non-believers, that the Holy Spirit will move them to faith in our divine Savior. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For each of us, that this Easter we will be renewed in faith and be effective witnesses of our risen Savior. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who enter the church at Easter and receive the sacraments of baptism, confirmation, and holy Eucharist, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who have left the church, stopped attending Mass, or abandoned the faith, that they will be moved to reconciliation, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the safety of the construction workers and the success of our building project, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the acceptance of vocations to the priesthood and religious life, that young men and women from our own families will keep Christ's call and offer their lives to him who gave his life for us. And for our parish seminarians, Tony Bennett, Michael Nugent, James Joseph, and Gabriel Gaudet. And for Anne Whalen and Caroline Jones, postulants with the Nashville Dominicans, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the sick and homebound, and for our deceased, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for whom this Mass is offered, the Saunders family. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our own personal intentions, which we offer in the quiet of our hearts, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, we ask you to hear all our prayers, even those prayers held within our hearts, and to grant them in accord with thy divine will, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Calling upon the prayers of our Blessed Mother, we pray. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Our Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death.
my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept sacrifice at your hands for the grace and glory of his name, for our good and good of all his holy church. Exalted with paschal gladness, O Lord, we offer the sacrifice by which your church is wondrously reborn and nourished through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. Lift up your hearts and live on the Lord. Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, at all times to acclaim you, O Lord, but on this day above all, to allow you yet more gloriously when Christ our Passover has been sacrificed. For he is the true Lamb who has taken away the sins of the world. By dying, he has destroyed our death, and by rising, restored our life. Therefore, overcome with paschal joy, every land, every people exalts in your praise. And even the heavenly powers with the angelic hosts sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim. Oh, 
celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven. And as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray upon the oblation of your church and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself, grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with his Holy Spirit may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, with St. Agnes, our patroness, and with all the saints, on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world, be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth with your servant Francis our Pope, Michael our Bishop, Stephen my Bishop, the Order of Bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, Gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters, and to all who are pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen.
behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed.
just a couple of announcements before we conclude Mass. First of all, on behalf of Father McShirley, my assistant, Father Finizato, Father Asian, and Father Jurgens, who's visiting with us this weekend, but we wish each of you a blessed and holy Easter. Remember always the great love God has shown us through our Savior, Jesus Christ, the difference he makes in this world. And so this week, our poor box collection is for Birthright, an organization that helps moms and needs to have their babies, and then also no youth group this week because of vacation. Let us pray. Look upon your church, O God, with unfailing love and favor, so that renewed by the Paschal mysteries, she may come to the glory of the resurrection through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. With your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go forth, the Mass is ended. Alleluia, Alleluia. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, Alleluia. St. Michael, be our angel, defend us in battle. Be our protection against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke and we humbly pray. And to thou, Prince of the Heavenly Host, by the power of God, cast into hell Satan and all the evil spirits who prowl out the world seeking the human souls. Amen.